All right, let's get it. This is Nap Knows Buffalo. Uh, I am your host, Kyle Knapp, and I got my guy Manny with me. We are a Casey List show once again. It was a one-week thing. Who knows? He might be back for the, the playoffs again if the Bills keep winning. Um, or should I just say wh- when? No, I don't, I don't want to jump that far ahead. We'll say if yeah. the Bills keep winning with a hopeful when. Um, but real quick, we we do have to. We have a lot to cover for this week. Um, yeah, we're not going to recap everything from the game against the Patriots, even though it was incredible. Um, but wanted to at least at least give us a chance to what like what were you thinking? What were you feeling during the game? How was your viewing experience? And how was just Saturday night for you in general, Manny? I actually went out with my wife to watch the game at a local establishment. <laughs> uh, and I was shocked. Honestly, I did not see that coming. And I think you, me, and Casey talked about that uh, over the game. Like, I I don't know anybody, like, obviously we were all on the bills, but mm-hmm. I don't think anybody really saw this coming so and then i saw you that you wore the hat on friday <laughs> and then it all made sense to me i was like that's why it happened <laughs> because kyle's wearing that big emblem hat <laughs> yeah look i i really don't like this whole theory that we have going here <laughs> about know. the hat i because i like I, here's the thing i don't like this hat like i legitimately I don't. don't like I it don't. because it's such a big logo and it does not fit <laughs> like my face at this point like it just yeah, doesn't I, work I, I totally get it kyle i totally get it but steve mentioned it too <laughs> to get he made me he made me leave and go get the hat in order yeah. to keep doing the hey, I, show. Like, I, 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 yeah, i'm what, with steve what can I do? That apparently one. that's what i have to do so i'm wearing it right now for yeah. people who aren't watching on youtube i am wearing the hat now um so i guess victory assured uh but yeah it was it was shocking, I, I yes. thought. And yeah. not, not not because the Bills won or anything, obviously. Like, we all how thought the Bills were going to win. But, yeah, it was how they won. The fact that it was literally a perfect game, yeah. seven for seven. Yeah. Every yard that could be gained was gained. Like, every single drive, for me, it, it was it was interesting because I've, I've never had a game where I'm watching like that. Other teams might have had – or other fan bases yeah. might have had yeah. – games where they're like okay this is just about perfect but like watching a perfect game it's just it's weird because the first drive i'm just super excited i'm pumped up yeah when josh throws the touchdown i'm like okay like that was clearly like there's no way he actually meant to throw that and then it was that was confirmed later on he did not mean to actually put that in the field of play yeah great play by dawson knox i was hyped the the micah hyde interception i'm hyped by like was, we're getting close to halftime when it, they when they went up twenty one to nothing, and then I'm texting back and forth with Casey like I'm just prepping post game tweets at this point yeah. like I'm sitting there on the couch laughing at all of the good things that are happening yeah like it was literally watching that game for me was a combination of just pure excitement and yelling because of that excitement and then other times just like laughing at the silliness of how badly the bills beat the Patriots. And I'm not, I'm not here to say that like the Patriots yeah. are done they're forever not bad, or anything like yeah, that, but it was, a. but they're definitely at, at the moment they, and for the foreseeable future, like they are the second class of the AFC East now, as opposed yeah. to the bills, the bills have overtaken them. I think that was very clear to everyone, except for maybe like Boston sports radio people, because there's yeah. plenty of things that, you know, they said that was just really stupid after the game. But watching that game had to be incredible for every. Like, I hope that everybody felt yeah. like I did or better than I did during that game because it was an incredible feeling watching that. We have a sports channel called TSN, and when I was a kid, they would always have the TSN turning point. That was the mm-hmm. key thing, and for me, that definitely was that Micah Hyde touchdown because yeah. I. I expected New England to kind of get their groove going, and they were on their first drive. And when I saw that throw, I was like, "Oh, damn! Here's the touchdown!" Because <laughs> it, it that was a great it throw, but like Mac it was going, yeah. And yeah. and Micah Hyde came out of not, nowhere, and I thought at first my reaction was he missed it, <laughs> like mm-hmm. he he found. I was like, out. "Damn, he scored a touchdown there!" Like that yeah, that was a yeah. perfect throw. Yeah, and then you yeah. see Micah get up, and you're just like, "What? How the he hell did he do the that?" He has the ball in his hands, and I'm like, "What the hell happened?" For me, right. that was a TSN turning point. You know, when that happened and that ty- type of interception, 
you know this was going to be a good day for Buffalo. And, yeah, and uh, you and saw really like, there was, in. yeah, and there like there was, there's some prominent uh, Patriots fans that they like uh, the the people from Barstool, the guys from Barstool, they were doing like a yeah. a viewing, yeah. a live viewing, which I think they they do for a lot of the um, playoffs because it's like yeah. it's a gambling company now. So yeah, they were doing that, and then you have like the video of um, a couple of them. They were all like just devastated oh, yeah. on that play. Devastated. That was incredible. And then there's other videos of. Like other, like the, the, I think it was post game, the Patriots post game host was still trying to say that the Bills are a bad team after that oh, game. Yeah. And like every single they, thing. Oh, and they, not only those, but like I, I listened to Boston Sports Radio Saturday or yeah. Sunday morning. I like yeah. it was incredible. I, it was literally like a feed me the tears of Patriots fans moment because any yeah. video, any soundbite, any clip of, Patriots fans crying about running the score up, crying about how the game went, trying yeah. to discredit They've the game in any way. Years. It was just, it was so, yeah. it was sweet, sweet victory. They I finally loved every had to of it. feel what other organizations been feeling for the last twenty years. So, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It was a great way to just end yeah. that, like officially end their their yeah, dynasty. Yeah. And once yeah. again, in no way saying like they're going to be a terrible yeah, team. They're still going to be a good team. Yeah. They, got I, some I think good they have pieces. they have some good pieces, right? Yeah, yeah. But like they're just not. They're no longer the big bad Patriots, yeah. and there's no better way to say that than the just the Bills yeah. blowing them out yeah. that way. Um, so that's a good way to we'll, we'll put a cap on that one. End yeah. that one. Wild card weekend is done. Obviously, it's Friday or Saturday, maybe even Sunday for whoever's uh, watching, listening, whatever. But we got to talk about some of these games yeah. because there are three other games outside of just the game of the week, the Bills and the Chiefs. Uh, and I don't even know if that's officially the game of the week, but whatever. It, yeah, it, it is. is the, like, the it, it, it is. Yeah. Um, but let's let's go through some of these games just like last week. Put out a Twitter poll on the, uh, on the Nap Knows Buffalo account and got some votes back. And I will give you the percentages afterwards. Obviously, the Bills – Chiefs is going to be a, a little bit skewed in favor yeah. of the Bills, and I will say a, a lot skewed in favor of the Bills because you know it's a Bills show. Yeah. But uh, Bengals at Titans—that is the game that opens up the divisional round. Titans are favored by three. It looks like they're getting Derrick Henry back. It looks like they're getting healthy. They are the number one seed. They have not been talked about a whole lot. The Twitter poll. The Twitter poll yeah. loves the Bengals, and. I I will let you go first and explain all of your reasoning for who you would pick and, and why. All I will say is I disagree with the Twitter poll, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you to tell me where you're at. I, I think uh, I think Cincinnati's become the darling of the playoffs this year, kind of like how Buffalo was last year. Uh, they're the team that you know has a up and coming quarterback, and I, I will say I I I am a Allen fan one, and I've been a Burrow fan since LSU days, beginning of LSU. Mm-hmm. And so I get that, and I love him. Uh, I think if King Henry is there, I think it, uh, Cincinnati has a good D. Like, they got some good pieces, some good playmakers. But I think if King Henry is healthy and he's ready to go, I think Tennessee is going to be tough. Especially with, I think AJ Brown there too, and he's mm-hmm. getting healthy. Julio's getting healthy. Um, that whole defense is getting healthier too for for um, Tennessee. I love Rashawn Evans. You know those guys are uh, great on the defense. Their D line is really good. I, I honestly, I I want to say Cincinnati because I love Joey B, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. I think I'm going with Tennessee. I just think if King Henry is healthy, uh, the you know the team's about to get healthy. I think they're going to be tough to beat at home. Yeah, I, so I th- I think I'm in a, a similar boat as you. I like yeah. I said, I disagree with the the Twitter vote. I think yeah. the Titans are going to win. I think that it's if it's a close game, the Titans win. If it's a blowout, the Bengals win. I just don't see it being a blowout type of yeah. a game. Um, and the reason I say that is because. If it's going to be a blowout, I, I don't think that the Titans can get back into the game as fast as the Bengals could just because of how their offenses operate. Yeah. The Bengals can score quick. 
And obviously, like Derrick Henry, he could score quick too. But like a passing offense allows you to get into a game quicker if you're down. If you're yeah. a run first offense, you aren't you don't have the same type of opportunity to do that. If one team gets a two score lead, much harder to get back into the game when you have a ground and pound type type of yeah. offense versus a passing offense. And to be completely fair, like everybody trusts Joe Burrow more than they trust Ryan Tannehill. However, I think the offensive line play comes into effect and the Bengals, they do still have a weak offensive line as good as they've been. Like that's the weak spot of the team and going up against the Titans, like the Titans, they don't have scrubs on the defensive line. They got some dudes. Jeffrey Simmons is a dude who can blow up a game plan. He is. We know that. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. As Bill says, we know that. So like I, that that's what worries me the most. And every single team has those guys. Yeah. But like even with the Bengals winning, and it's awesome they got their first win. Huge Joe Burrow fan. It's hard not to be the way he plays and the way he just acts and the way he yeah. carries himself after games. Like the dude's just got swagger. Hard yeah. not to be a big fan of him. I just don't think that they're going to be able to play at the level of the Titans, who they've been getting it done all year without anybody. Yeah. So if they can get it done without their superstars, with all of these players rotating in and out of the lineup because of injury, I think now that they're getting healthy, it's like it's just going to come together for them against a team that is not as put together. Well, in they're the not Bengals. there yet. I yeah, think, and like, they're, Bengals they're still are closer. New. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 kind of what the Bills were last year, right? They're, right. They're figuring things out. They'll they'll probably figure it out this summer and get those pieces that are needed wherever they are. Um, but if I, I think if Cincinnati has a shot at upsetting, I think Mixon's going to be the most important. I think Mixon's got to establish himself and get there uh, for some of those passes that Burrow's going to have to make, especially if Simmons gets loose there. And I think he's going to have to establish the run because I think with the O-line, weak O-line, you're going to have to have that you know play-action kind of play where gives Burrow maybe – a few more seconds than he probably would straight out in the pocket. Right. So yeah, I think yeah. Nixon's going to be really important. He, I, th- I agree with that. I yeah. think that the disappointing thing about this game with the way we're both picking it is I think every single person outside of Titans fans yeah. would want to see Cincinnati a with. Joe Burrow versus either Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen. Yeah. AFC championship I game. I, like the NFL would just like, they got to be salivating over the possibility of that yeah. because like as good as the Titans are, the QBs sometimes make those marquee matchups and make them even bigger than yeah. they would be hey. before. And the, the Ryan stars. Tannehill is not bad, like by yeah. any mean. He's yeah. I think he's better than people give him credit for, but yeah. he's just not that level of player. He yeah, doesn't he's... sell games. He doesn't sell yeah. tickets. He doesn't. He doesn't really just do it for anybody. Yeah, he gets the job done for the Titans clearly. Yeah. But and <clears throat> sadly to same. say, QBs are the stars. They are what they are the NFL. So, yeah. So I, all right. So we're both on the Titans, even though we would like the Bengals to advance yeah. um, 49ers Packers Packers yeah. are favored by six, which is a lot for the, yeah. it's a lot for the postseason. Yeah. It's also, I feel like that's a lot for the way that the 49ers play, even with yeah. the Packers being as good as they are. The Twitter poll is just all over the Packers. I am as well. I think this is going to be a close game. Though. I think this is the type of game where like the Packers win the 49ers cover type of thing. Yeah. The 49ers got dudes all over their offense, except at quarterback. They're, they're kind of honest. They're kind of like a, they're the Titans of the NFC in a way, yeah, except for they have enough. better weapons on offense. I think like Jimmy G though, like when he puts a game together where he doesn't yeah. turn the ball over, they are just a lethal offense. And that defense is playing really, really well. Can they stop Aaron Rodgers? I, I don't think they'll be able to stop him enough. But I think the way their offense plays, like that ball control style where it's like, let's get Debo Samuel involved in the running game. Like we don't have to just throw it to him. We can get him involved in the running game. We will just like ground and pound you with everybody on our offense as opposed to just the running backs. And then you got Kittle, obviously. You got Ayuk. Like they got, they got enough guys that I think they can make this close. I just don't think that they can go into Green Bay and get the win. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I watched that San Fran game last week and I liked a lot of what they had. Garoppolo, you know, honestly, he's good enough. Like, 
I, yeah. I think he he's shown it. They were in the Super Bowl what two years ago, three years ago, with Garoppolo. Two or, yeah, two or three, whatever it was. Yeah, it was back yeah. when Sanders so, had that almost game winner. That yeah, yeah, it, like yeah. And so he's good enough, and I I I agree with you. Like putting Debo Samuel everywhere is is key for them. Um, I love Ayuk and Kittle as well, and then they got Jennings, who I I, I find him very intriguing. Uh, hopefully he gets more shots. The guy just seems to catch anything that's thrown to him. Uh, and uh, and Mitchell's been phenomenal for them too. I think if they can keep it like those, if they can run the ball on uh, on Green Bay and keep Aaron Rodgers out, uh, it's going to be basically time possession. If I think if if San Fran can get those, you know, second and short, third and shorts, I think. You know, they could give a good shot. I, I think Packers are beatable. I don't think they are the best by far. I think what what gives them that extra bit of advantage is when they played, everybody's going to go back to, well, the 49ers and the Packers played in the NFC Championship game two years ago. I think it was two years ago when, when yeah. the 49ers went yeah. to the Super Bowl. And the 49ers just trounced them. Yeah. That game was in San Francisco, I believe. Yes, it was. I believe it was. They The yeah. 49ers were home. That makes a difference in terms of weather. Yeah. I would lo- love to see the numbers on Jimmy G playing in cold weather games. I can't think of games where he has typically played. Because, like, no. you play out in San Francisco, like, then there's games against Seattle. But other yeah. than that, you're not really playing consistently in cold weather games. And as much as that doesn't matter, like, for everything like that's not how you should make your determination about a game it does factor in if a team is not used to it at all it does matter it doesn't matter like in terms of well this team isn't a cold weather team so even though they're a better team we're going to pick the other way but if there's if there's teams that like their advantage kind of goes away with like you have a quarterback who doesn't play as well in the cold i would be very interested if jimmy g does like what his splits are versus yeah cold weather games so that that would be something I, I, i'm kind of but... that narrative was run last week so much on josh allen too like can he play in cold weather you, you know he's struggled in right cold and, weather. and i, I get and, that and, and you know like honestly at the end of the game it's about managing for for garoppolo it's going to be just managing the ball responsibly and you know you have good weapons on that team that you can manage the ball properly. They do. So, they got some <laughs> weapons on that. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. And so, and the defense is good. My only concern, and this is where I would lead, I'm leaning towards Green Bay winning a Colts one as well, uh, is that uh, last game Warner was uh, uh, was out, mm-hmm. and Nick Bosa. And Bosa. Was out. Yep. And those are big, big losses. Those are it big sounds parts. like Warner might play, but I don't yeah. know if. I don't Bosa know if Bosa is going to be able to get back with that yeah. injury with it, especially with it being a short week. That's Monday yeah. and Saturday. Yeah. That ma- like that matters. That's, that's a big tough. deal. And so yeah. that's why I lean towards more towards Green Bay because you know Green Bay's offense is just uh, yeah they're they they're a wagon they they're a yeah. wagon and they yeah. do have the running backs to play in yeah. the cold weather. I know yeah. like it it the cold Dylan weather like I said Jones it's not everything. These, they, I they think are, the cold weather stuff like that the talk that went on with Allen. I think it matters more when a quarterback doesn't have all the tools that he has. Yeah. Like cold weather, I don't care about Mahomes. Aaron Rodgers done that. I don't care about Aaron Rodgers playing. I don't care yeah. about like Josh Allen or Tom Brady. Like guys who are like that dude playing in cold weather games, I don't care. Like they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Yeah. But guys who are like middle to lower tier quarterbacks, I think that stuff might affect them more because they don't have the full you know, skill set or the, yeah. all of the tools to get the job done. So we're leaning Packers on that game. Yeah. The last game before the, the bills Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I believe it's yeah. like a three o'clock game or something like that. Yeah. We got the Rams at the Buccaneers. The bucks yeah. are currently favored by three points. The Twitter poll is all over the Rams. I guess leaning Rams, I should say, because it was 64% for the Rams. Yeah. I, I agree with the Twitter poll here. I think the Rams are going to win, but I'm going to give a caveat to that because the, the Rams are healthy. Yes. The Bucks they're missing some pieces, especially on the offensive line, their wide receivers, and their, their, their weakness on defense is that secondary yeah. where the Rams have so, – like they got wide receivers who could take advantage of that. I think the caveat I will put on it is if Tristan Wirfs 
and I believe it's Ryan Jensen, maybe. I know the last name is Jensen. Yeah, if they just... play, then I think the Bucks win because I think they'll be able to control things offensively enough. I just trust in Tom Brady. But if they're both out or even if just Worfs is out, I think the Rams might end up just boat racing the Bucks because you get that Rams defensive line going against some backups and you got a guy like Tom Brady who is – the greatest of all time by far, but he is immobile. If you can yeah. get pressure up the middle and then you also have pressure converging from the outside, which Aaron Donald is the type of guy, Von Miller, they're the type of guys who can do that sort of thing. Like the Rams have that defense that they can beat the Bucks that way. Yeah. If Tristan Wirfs is not playing, I think the Rams boat race the Bucks. If he does play, then I think it's a close game that the Bucks win. I think he's that important to them because of how – like potent the the Rams defensive line can be. And I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I think it'll be an entertaining game, but I think, I think Tristan Wirfs matters that much to the bucks right now with all of the other pieces that they're also missing. I think I agree with you. I think that even if they were in the lineup, I just think Brady is missing too many pieces. I don't think Fournette is back and I don't think Le'Veon Bell and Ronald Jones are the answer. Uh, I think Godwin not being there and Antonio Brown not being there. You're you're depending on Tyler Johnson, I believe, and Scotty Miller. And hey, don't hate on don't hate on Scotty Miller. We did this last week. We did this last week. Let's not. Uh, I know still, he didn't. I know he didn't do a whole lot, but don't hate on yeah. Scotty Miller. Uh, I like Tyler Johnson, but you know he just hasn't had enough reps to really play. I think I think Tyler Johnson's gonna be a guy who comes on later into his rookie contract. Yeah, I like yeah. him. I liked him yeah. coming out of the draft. Yeah, yeah. I, I think too. He's I just a, I think he's right now guy. he just hasn't had the reps to be that mm-hmm. guy. Uh, and so then you're depending on Gronk and and Evans, and I you know they're great, but I, I think it's gonna be hard. I think I think that D line on 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 the Rams is just going to be too hard, even if they get their starters in. So I think, I think because of that, that's why I'm leaning towards um, uh, the Rams is, you know, I think, you know, Stafford will probably make a mistake here and there, which is kind of usual. Yeah. Yeah, You know, Detroit and him can't just go away that easily. Uh, So, you know, I, and they got the power, like, Cup, Higby, these guys are all healthy. Cam Akers coming. Cam, Cam Akers, Akers coming back from the Achilles he was in five months. Is he was just, really good in that game too. I, I how he, how can he, he do that? Like Achilles yeah. is typically a year long yeah. injury. Yeah. He came back in yeah. what five seven whatever. And how many months yards it was. did he have? He played he ninety five total. And he yeah. had ninety five total something like yeah, that. Yeah, he played more than Sony Michelle. And and look at Michelle. Like he's a great second guy to come behind acres like they got a great time better than ronald jones and and Le'Veon bell on the other side right so is it, and they got uh, keyshawn vaughn's not like keyshawn he's not vaughn, bad. Yeah, he's he's not bad yeah he played more last week but like you know i acres and michelle i'll take any day as a tandem yeah and i mean especially so, if acres is going to play the way he played yeah on, like, I, and I, I that was just impressive him. I I expect him to. I he's a he's a bull, man. He just he runs you over. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he and he's a decent catching back too. I know they'll use Sony Michelle more more for that, but Akers is pretty underrated, I think, for that as well, before he got hurt. So I, I like it. I think Stafford gets it done again, and, you know, just enough to get, you know, the ball to his guys and that defense I think is gonna cause problems for Brady. So yeah, I'm with the Rams too. Yeah. And I think there's a big difference. I'm not even, I think there just is flat out a big difference between missing all of the players that the, the bucks are missing versus the Eagles and then missing them versus a team like the Rams, because the Eagles were like, that was like a pity type of thing of like, well, you made it in the playoffs and that's cool. Like claps for you. Good for you. But like, they're not a true real contending playoff team. They yeah. were one of the couple teams that got in that it was just like, that's good for you. Like you, you yeah. outplayed yourself this year. You learned. Nobody expected you that. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So they weren't in, in the bucks as badly as they beat them. Yeah. They just didn't look like a, they didn't look yeah. great the entire time. It, it kind of came on more at the end of the game. Second half. It was a slow start. 
I just don't think they can do that against the Rams, even though like they did that against the Packers last year in the playoffs and came back to win. I don't think that's just not a playoff winning yeah. formula. So the only thing I'll say, the only thing I'll say is, you know, it's Brady. So that, right, and that, that's that's where I struggle so much yeah. because because Brady's Brady, and you, nothing. Yeah. you can't stop the goat basically sometimes, but. As we've seen before, Eli Manning has sure stopped the goat before. So, so and, there could be, and Matt Stafford could be that Eli Manning this year. So. I don't, I just don't think he. I don't think he can be. Um, but that's why I said, like, look, if it's yeah. a close game, I'm going to roll with the Bucks. I think the yeah. Bucks win in a close game. But if it's a blowout, I don't think the Bucks have enough healthy guys to blow out the Rams yeah. right now. I think key the Rams would be gone. that. Yeah. yeah key guys like are that out stuff does matter in the playoffs. Yeah. Health matters, all that. And the Bucks yeah. are not getting healthy. The Rams are getting healthy. So yeah. that's where we stand on the other three games. But the most important game of the week, yeah. another rematch, because there, I believe this is the third rematch of this round. I think this round is going to be just so much better than yeah. last round. It very clearly, like the better teams won, the teams that should advance did. But the Bills at the Chiefs, it's a rematch of what week four, I believe, week five. five. Yeah. And the Bills won that matchup 38 to 10. But as we all know, last year they lost both of the matchups against the Chiefs. Could we see that same type of success where the Bills are the team that wins both of them this year? I would love to see that. Everybody listening would love to see that. But it's going to be interesting. It's it's a big game. Win and move on. But here's the thing. And we'll get into like the keys from the offense and defense and everything, but I gotta I gotta put this out there. There's a lot of differences from this matchup versus last matchup. And this yeah. isn't even like a credit to myself. I saw this from a couple people on Twitter, but the most recent one that I saw was from Anthony over at Cover One. He said uh the the he put this out in a tweet. The differences for the Chiefs from week five to now, Chavarius Ward is playing, that's a big deal. Chris Jones is playing. That's a massive deal. Yeah. Melvin Ingram, they traded for him. That's a big deal. Like their defensive line is so much better now than it was then. Yeah. Juan Thornhill, their running back rotation, like th- that stuff all matters for them. On the flip side, the Bills also have a lot of differences. Obviously, Trey White's out. That's like yeah. that's a that's the concern. Yeah. Matt Milano's playing though. Yeah. The offense, they're playing a lot better. Yeah. Ryan Bates, when he's Stepped in at left guard. The offensive yeah. line and the offense as a whole has gotten better. Devin Singletary has emerged as a real running back one option. The offensive line just playing physical, like looking like a true NFL level offensive line. That stuff is all different too. So it's not like one team is facing all of these differences and the other team is the same. It's not like yeah. the Bills got worse or better or and then the, the Chiefs got worse. or But like they both got better from where they were at at that point in the year. And then in some ways they're not the same team at that point in the year. So yeah. there's a lot of differences. Wh- who, I mean, we all know Mahomes is the yeah. game changer on offense, yeah. Yeah. but who else would you say is like, is, is that key for the bills? Is it Tyreek Hill and is it Travis Kelsey or is there somebody else that uh, they got to really kind of key in on this time around? I think there's a guy who emerged last week that looks really dangerous, and I wanted him on the Bills before too, and that's Jarek McKinnon. The way he's playing, running the ball, catching the ball and running, that scares me a lot with how bad the Bills have been over the, you know, before last game with their tackling. And a Jerry McKinnon scares me way more than Tyree Kill and, and Travis Kelsey right now because he he killed that Pittsburgh defense. He did. So did, I think so did a, Travis Kelsey, though. He, so he did. did. Uh, yeah, he, they did. But like the part of the thing that makes Kelsey and Tyree Kill really good is opening up that back game with either Hilaire or or Jerk McKinnon and and uh, Damian Williams, whoever's there, that's part of their system, right? Is get that going, and that will open up guys like Tyree Kill in the middle, especially and Travis Kelsey, because now the linebackers have to always be worried about about a guy like Jerk McKinnon. And man, Jerk McKinnon looked phenomenal, and that 
scares the living shits out of me. Yeah, so I was I I didn't know if you were gonna go there or if you were gonna yeah. take Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill. Yeah. So that's where I was gonna go if you took yeah. the chalk pick because like yeah. the addition of Jarek McKinnon to that offense makes it even more lethal. Like they were lethal without him. They were a great offense without him. Yeah. We've seen them play obviously without him in the past because yeah. he wasn't there last year when the Bills played yeah. him. What he can do, like Clyde Edwards Alaire, I think he's a good player. I don't think he's a great running back, but yeah. he makes the most with his talents. Yeah. But he just doesn't have the speed, the game breaking speed that a guy okay. like McKinnon has, where now not only do you have to worry about Travis Kelsey, who is faster, more physical than a lot of the guys who he will be lining up against, Tyreek Hill, who is going to outrun anybody on the field. Now you also have to worry about a dude out of the backfield who is extremely fast, has that game-breaking speed. That matters. That being said, I'm going to pump the brakes a little bit on what you said. I don't I don't love that they have McKinnon to rely on also, but he still does not worry me more than in Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. So they're still the guys that worry me the most because if McKinnon is the guy that worries me the most, I'm shifting my defense to focus on him. Yeah. If I'm the Bills, I'm still going into this game saying, you're not going to beat me with Tyreek Hill. You're not going to beat me with Travis Kelsey. Are they going to get theirs? Sure. But I'm going to make sure that they don't make those game-breaking plays. If those plays are going to be made, you got to find somebody else on that offense to do it. So for me, it is chalk. It's an easy answer. And there's other guys that can obviously hurt you if you're the Bills defense yeah. because the Chiefs, like we know they got some other weapons. Yeah. But if like I'm taking the chalk answer on this one, as good as some of those other guys are, as much as McKinnon adds to that offense, I like it. You still, it's, it's Tell- always, it's always Travis Kelsey. It's always Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Those are always the guys you got to worry about the most. And then think- if McKinnon makes some plays, I think this is where the loss of Trey White hurts the most. Because yeah. there's other, there's been a lot of the teams that the Bills have played outside of the Bucks. It like it hasn't really been a great wide receiver core, or like it's just not been great offenses, honestly, altogether. So it hasn't made as much of a difference. And we saw in the first half against the Bucks, they struggled a lot. And then there was some miscommunication, obviously, in the overtime, and that caused like a game breaking, game winning play. I, I, it's going to be really interesting how the Bills attack a team that has so much speed now. Yeah, it's so much they speed. speed at all three skill positions on yeah. offense. Now it's yeah. not just the wide receivers and the tight end. They got the speed at the running back position too. So how I think having Matt Milano back is extremely important for this, but losing Trey white is also like, that's I'm that even if there's their, one thing about the defense that makes me nervous. It's literally the fact that we don't have Trey white for this game. Yeah, that's the and, thing that makes me the most nervous. And their backups, even like McCauley Hardman, who right. scored a touchdown with us, the tons of speed. Byron Pringle has been everywhere this this year. Uh-huh. I, you know, guy gets yards and he gets touchdowns. And even Demarcus Robinson's been everywhere. And then I, I think Josh Gordon's out, but I don't even know if he's going to be playing. So, you know, they got they got some killer weapons on that team and. Mm-hmm. That worries me, even though I think, you know, we have the best safety tandem, Dane Jackson and uh, Dane Jackson and Levi Wallace covering those guys scares me a little bit, not having yeah. Trey White. And I think I think this is where Teron Johnson is going to be key to. Yeah, having a guy like Teron, even I think somebody else on Twitter that I saw pointed out, uh, Steve Math is his his guy, Saran Neal. He came up big in that first yeah. matchup against Travis yeah. Kelsey, and that yeah. might have been because of the absence of Matt Milano. I'm not totally sure if that was because of that or if that was just something that they knew they were going to do going into the game. But like, they, they're going to have to find a way to take away either Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. Yeah. And so doing something like that might like they might have to focus on. We're going to take away. Travis Kelsey, because we know we can do that easier than maybe Tyreek Hill because we just don't have the same level of player on the outside right now. And I think this is the type of game where Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson, like they they could make a lot of money for themselves Yeah, based off is, of how they play in this, this game. And obviously game if them. the Bills win, the game's moving forward because there's no bad offenses left. Yeah. So 
this like this is the time of year where they could really really increase their value yeah and obviously dane jackson's locked up for another couple of years levi wallace is he's going to be a free agent after this year but like you could show you have so much more value than he, we even thought if you're able to play really well against a team like this and show like look i don't have the same speed but it doesn't matter i'm gonna outsmart them type of thing yeah they can really either show their worth or show you are what we thought you were and i think they can still win the game if it ends up being like that you are what we thought you were type of defense with those two corners because of everybody else around them because of the way the defensive line has been playing because of the guys and how smart the linebackers are as long as Obviously, Tremaine Edmonds has to play up to that level and not like his lower level, you know, play. Yeah. But I think he's been playing better as of late. And then obviously you have the guys behind them in Poyer and Hyde. Like yeah. having those guys is always going to be an advantage. It's huge. It's yeah. good for the the young guys. We saw yeah. how important they were against the Patriots. They're going to be just as, if not more important, this week. So that Can, as, as worried City- as I am. Like I still think that the Bills defense is going to be able to step up to the task of figuring out a way to shut down or at least slow down the Chiefs offense. Because I, I won't I think, say that we'll shut down them, shut them down. I think That's also Casey's happen. receivers have a tendency to have a lot of drop passes. I think I've noticed that a little bit. Uh like Hardman and even Tyreek Hill, where they've had sometimes drop passes more than they probably should. <laughs> Uh, but it's going to be an interesting game. I, I think the one thing that you mentioned that, I, you know, if we're going into the next round is the D line, right? Our D line against their O line. Um, so b- they before, do have... you, before you get into actually, you know yeah. what? Yeah. Let's, let's do this. I do have one more thing about the chiefs offense and it's, it's yeah. kind of a combination, but this is still the offensive side of the ball for the Chiefs. So let's keep doing yeah. this. So the, I, I believe the Creed Humphrey is a uh, he's the rookie, and I think they have mm-hmm. another rookie on the O line. They got two rookies. As much as you know, the Kansas City Chiefs O line has been playing well. They still have two rookies on their O line, and I I I really need to see the D line work <laughs> this game. Um, I need to see Addison. Oh, well, I don't know if Addison's going to be there because of his shoulder. That'll be interesting. But, yeah. uh, you know, Star and Ed Oliver and AJ and Hughes and, you know, the list goes on uh, with uh, Russo and Basham, whoever's playing. Like, these guys need to make it tough for the O-line, which will result in making it tougher for Mahomes. And we've seen if Mahomes is – pressure too much he makes mistakes we saw it in week five he, him doing that we saw him earlier this year doing that mm-hmm. so that's going to be key you should be able as much as we want to say they're doing good the rookies are doing good they are still rookies and what we know of rookies rookies still can make mistakes so i'm gonna i was looking this up while you were talking yeah i don't think they have two rookies i think it's just one it looks like they have um, Andrew Wiley, he's a fourth year tackle. Yeah. Uh, then they have Kyle Long, he's very clearly not a yeah, rookie. He's not um, a rookie. Creed Humphrey, rookie. Yeah. Joe Tooney, not a rookie. He's a vet. Yeah. Orlando Brown, not a rookie. So they have one rookie. Isn't there a Martin that's playing too? Uh, I thought last no. game they had a Martin. They might have. They might have been playing a rookie in that game, but yeah. at this point, right now, they do not. They only have one rookie, and okay. he's been the best offensive lineman yeah. rookie. Yeah. This year, their offensive line is much it's improved good. from yeah, yeah last yes, year. and they've they've really come together. Their offense has come together. Here's the thing that I I I was thinking about this earlier today. Tell me if I'm crazy or not, but I I really do think that this is the case right now, based on how the two teams are playing. I I think that the Bills can beat the Chiefs if Patrick Mahomes outplays Josh Allen. I think the Bills can still beat the Chiefs. If Patrick Mahomes outplays Josh Allen, I don't think that the Chiefs can beat the Bills if Josh Allen outplays Patrick Mahomes, because I think right now the Bills offense is just that balanced where if they need to lean on the running game for a little while, they still can do that. They've shown like the the last five weeks now, Devin Singletary running back one. Josh Allen has been effective in the running game. Even if he's not as effective throwing the ball, he's been effective that way. So they have two guys who can run the ball efficiently, effectively, 
and get the job done. If it needs to be like a muck it up, ugly type of game, the chiefs offense, as much as they have that speed out of the backfield, the way the bills defense is playing right now, I don't know if the chiefs can lean on a running game as much. Of course, Andy Reid is definitely a guy who could scheme some things up. Jarek McKinnon changes things for them where they have that speed element out of the backfield, but I just don't know if they can lean on the running game as much if Mahomes isn't having a good to great level game. It, like, am I crazy for thinking that right now? Uh, yeah, because <laughs> Mahomes, I think if Mahomes is out playing Josh Allen, I think that means that probably Travis Kelsey and, and Tyreek Hill are out playing most of our defense <laughs> as well. But, but you don't think that the Bills, like, let's say, I, I'm I'm not saying that, like, it's a run-it-up score type of game because yeah. what I'm saying is I think that the Bills can, if the if the Chiefs are scoring semi-consistently, we'll say, because yeah. I don't think either team is going to score like the Bills did or like the Chiefs did against the Steelers. Like, I don't yeah. think it's going to be that type of game. Yeah. I think it'll be a kind of high-scoring game, but not, like, that level. I I think that the Bills offense, even if Josh Allen is not throwing the ball as well as he possibly could, I think they can still put up points by running the ball. That's more what I'm saying, not that the Bills defense isn't playing well. I think that the Bills can keep up in a game where they can't lean on the pass as much, and I don't think that the Chiefs can do that right now. Maybe I'm completely crazy for thinking that. I might be. This might be a terrible take, and it might all blow up in my face. I see. But I I was thinking about. I just think that the Bills are a more balanced attack at the moment. I don't know if they're more balanced. I think like having what Jerk McKinnon showed me, they have a pretty balanced attack too. <laughs> and and I and with Chris Jones playing this game, I you know I don't know what Motor can do. I'm hoping Motor can run, but if they if he can't, then what? Right, you're. Yeah, no, you know, and how that's, it's, it's, your... that take is completely dependent on Singletary being yeah. the type of guy that we've seen the last couple of weeks. Yeah. If he's not, that take completely blows up and yeah. it's not, it's not correct at all. It's yeah. 100% dependent on Josh Allen, Devin Singletary being the type yeah. of players. It's running not even the ball Josh Allen, play. because I think Josh Allen will run. He'll get his Well, but that's why I said both run. of them. It has to be, yeah. I think in that I think case, it's it more has Singletary. to be both of them. I think it's but more for, Singletary. But for what I'm saying, it has to be both of them. It can't yeah. just be yeah. Singletary, if that makes sense. So yeah. if Singletary is not being that guy, and we can transition this now to the Chiefs defense, yeah. because if Chris Jones is just blowing up the offensive line yeah. and Singletary has no chance of running the ball, then we have to lean on Josh Allen's arm, and yeah. it has to be great. And I think it will I think it will be. I think he's going to put up that t- like yeah, a I think he's great type a of game. performance. I'm not saying I expect him to be bad or anything. Yeah. That was more just like a hypothetical type of thing that I was thinking. But the Chiefs defense, not the same defense we saw week no. five. Not no. at all. Obviously, they're, they're Ingram, better. Jones, yeah. yeah, they're so much better than they were at that yeah. point in the season. Just like the Bills defense is so much better than they were at that point in the season. But there, like, there is levels to it because the Bills defense seems to have come together just as a unit. And the Chiefs defense, they got healthy. Like There's literally different guys on that defense now as opposed to when the Bills saw them earlier in the year. Chris Jones was the guy who just blew up the Bills game plan last year in the AFC Championship game. Is is he going to do that again this year? I think so. You think so? You think he's going to blow up the game plan? Yeah. Oh, Manny, I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, he's going to be tough. Like He's going to be tough. What's, you know, what's different about our own line? Yeah, they've been playing well, but it's the same guys trying to defend Chris Jones as last it's, year. But it's literally not, though. Yeah, It's it, four of the same. Actually, it's three four. of the same five. It's three of the same five. Well, it's not different? even four. It, it's, Bates is different, it, yeah. and, and Spencer Brown is different. I'm not yeah. saying that it's like, well, because we have those guys that we're just going to neutralize yeah. him. He's yeah. he's going to get You're, his. you're talking about a rookie sack. again. One of them is a rookie, right? And... As we talked about it, rookies make mistakes, and Browns may had mistakes this year. And Chris Jones Ingram worries me more against Brown. That that's yeah. I don't think Chris Jones ends up playing as much against Spencer Brown. Chris Jones no. is, I think, more. But of what I'm saying interior, as a right? overall, as a as a O line, like against Ingram and Jones and that O line, I, I just 
I don't know if they can do it. If that look, if they play the same way they played last year in the AFC Championship game, if the offensive line yeah. just falls apart that way, if yeah. they don't step up to the task, then it's going to be the same exact outcome. Yeah. Doesn't matter how great Josh Allen plays. Doesn't matter how great Devin Singletary and everybody else on this offense could be. If the offensive line pulls a performance like they did in the AFC Championship game, which I think everybody they're like in the back of their mind somewhere, as much as I think this offensive line is playing better than that at this point in the season, they shouldn't have that type of performance. I would be lying if I was like, well, they're they're going to shut out the Chiefs' defense. Like they're going to be able to completely control everything. I don't think that. No. So like there is a thought in the back of my mind of exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know if I'm as far over to that side as as like, you are well, right now. I I think there's going to be. I I'm hoping that Dable and McDermott have adjustments in place just in case that happens. Yes. If Chris Jones and Ingram are breaking that O line, you're gonna have to change your your game plan, and that's what I'm hoping that they have adjustments in place in case that happens. That maybe, maybe you know, doing dink and dunks, you know, like that's the solution, right? Now mm -hmm. they're going to have to play conservative if we're just telling Singletary to go out two yards and we pass it to him and he runs it for eight, right? Or Allen is uh, doing RPOs the left side, which is stronger. Like they're going to have to have adjustment because I don't think you're going to be able to control Ingram and Jones the whole game. And right, and I, I think they're going to bust out. I, I believe they're going to bust out. I think Chris Jones is going to have a big game again. I just think is they are coaching staff going to be ready for that when that happens? Because last so that's, year and that's, they that's weren't. what I was. Yeah, and they they weren't, and that's what I was going to say is last year it just didn't happen for the Bills. Yeah. It seemed like they had their plan going in. They didn't really stray much from that plan, and it just wasn't working once the game got going. There's, yeah. I think, the thing that's going to happen this year is the defenses have enough impact players who are playing really well right now where it's going to come down to when those big moments happen for the defense, because I, tr I truly believe, and I, I, I said, even though I don't think that Chris Jones is going to have like this monster five sack game, I think he's going to get no. his still. Yeah. he's gonna It's get his. when those big moments happen, which offense rebounds and responds yeah. the best, because the best. I think yeah. both defenses are going to be able to make some plays. The offenses are also going to be able to make some plays, but who's going to recover yeah. better when yeah. those big plays happen by the opposing defense? Yeah. Because, like, let's say Chris Jones gets a big sack that, you know, stalls the Bills' momentum or Melvin Ingram or whatever. There's a fumble. If the Bills don't recover from that, then it doesn't matter. If the Chiefs have – if if Mahomes comes out and throws an interception, Poyer, or Hyde, anybody gets an interception, and they, they just take away all that momentum – then obviously things are completely different. But if that happens, which I wouldn't shock me for either of those things to happen, yep. if the offense recovers, we got ourselves a game. Yep. If the offense doesn't recover, like what you're saying, yep. like it, then things get really difficult because of the way the Chiefs, once they really get a grip on you, they can they just won't stop. And that's what we saw last year. I think we're all just hoping we don't yeah. see that that again this year. That Hardman fumble, right, last mm -hmm. year in the AFC that could have derailed the whole Chiefs, but they didn't. They recovered and they came knocking. The team got, you know, they all kind of got together and and, mm -hmm. and adjusted and got it back. And guess who got the first touchdown for the Chiefs after that? It was McCauley Hardman. Get his confidence back, get going, and they were good. This week five, you look, what happened? You know, a pick six by Micah Hyde, and the other team couldn't mm -hmm. catch up. Like, they fell apart. So I think that's the key. Like whoever makes that turnover, like you said, the the offense that recovers first is going to be the one that you know, like whoever recovers properly is is going to win. Like mentally, it, it's I think this game is going to be way more mental game than than I think any previous game that these guys had. So that it's that leads me mental. to my next question then, which yeah. is. How much do you think that experience of being in this big moment against this team last year, how much do you think that learning from the mistakes that the Bills made last year, how do you think that that's going to help them this year? Or do you think that it just, it's not necessarily going to matter as much because as, as much as that was a learning experience for the Bills last year, 
the Chiefs have been through it already. They've gone through their learning yeah. experience. They've been through the fire with that. So yeah. they're 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 the established team in this situation. Yeah. Even though the Bills are technically an established team, they're just they're still not on that same extended you know stay that the Chiefs are of being a deep run into the playoffs. I think both of them is still a mental game for both of them. Even, you know, the week five, I'm sure there's a lot of things Mahomes learned, right? Obviously he did because they turned their season around, right? Including Mahomes. So I think Mahomes is going to remember week five. He doesn't care about the last year AFC championship. He's going to remember week five and what happened and what the media said and what, you know, others were saying about him and, you know, he's regressing, you know, which is just, I mean, he's just, he's not, he's Patrick he's Mahomes. He is, he, he's he a is, beast. if, even if you don't want to call him the best quarterback in the NFL, which I still think that he's, he is. I think he is. His, I think he his, is. Until somebody can knock him down. Than anybody else in the league, yeah. in my opinion. His floor yeah. is higher. His yeah. ceiling and might not be, I think there's, there's some things, some people have said this this past week, that Josh Allen's ceiling, ceiling might be is a little higher. bit higher. Yeah. But his floor is definitely lower. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes stealing might not, and who knows, it might be higher. Than Allen will never know. get, to and that I don't floor. care either. And I'll, I'll tell you thing. this: I don't care. Allen, even if people think his ceiling's higher, he's never going to get to Mahomes' floor until he wins that Super Bowl. And so, he, yeah, you can, and that's you yeah. can say whatever people can say all they want. He's not even going to be on Mahomes' floor until Allen wins a Super Bowl. Then you can talk about whose ceiling is higher because and right now, fair. and right now, Allen's still down here. Compared to Mahomes, and yeah, as I mean, much having, as it hurts having me that to ring say does that, matter. It, it it matters, right? I think He's you might catch some hate in the comments for that, that's but I think fine. that's a very it's a very logical way it's, of going about that it's, thought. It's straightforward, right? And yeah. I think for for the Bills, yeah, that AFC Championship is still in their mind. Week five, it was still in their mind. I think even today, it's going to be in their mind. You talk about Diggs, you know, like posting pictures from the. You know, people posting pictures about that whole him, you know, with his head like this and watching mm-hmm. them. The Diggs is still thinking about that. So it's still a mental game. It's just who can, you know, zen it out, you know, the zen. And, and that's <laughs> going to be the key. Like, is it going to be Allen? Because I think if Allen starts panicking and we've seen Mr. You know, like hero ball Allen, right? He becomes that hero ball when he starts panicking and he's, he starts struggling and and Mahomes, we saw it, like, you know, week five where he struggled, you know, when he starts forcing things. Both of these guys just got to keep it simple. And, and whoever keeps it simple the most will win it, you know. Yeah, it's and easy the, the good thing is the really exciting thing that, like, as a Bills fan, we haven't been able to look forward to yeah. ever, really, unless you were alive back in the, the 90s and cognizant of what's going on back in the like, yeah. late 80s, 90s. Yeah. Like, the Bills and Chiefs, now seem like they are on a war path for the next X number yeah. of years, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. And that means we get to have that Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes conversation year in and year out, hopefully yeah. where it's well, who's better. And it, it might, it's, it's going like, to end up just being a who's better this year type of thing too, because they're both so good that we need to start instead of trying yeah. to knock the other one down, we need to start just being like, Look, here's like they're both great. Great. Like, let's just they're leave both good at that. There's guys yeah. who are gonna like one of them's Allen. gonna have a better season, one of them's gonna have a better game, but they are both great quarterbacks. It doesn't matter. It, like, let's say, and this is hypothetical, let's say Josh Allen outplays Patrick Mahomes, the Bills win. That says yeah. nothing, nothing about, about Patrick Mahomes. Mo- yeah. I, like nothing about him. Yeah. And I think conversely, if they're both great Patrick Mahomes outplays Josh Allen. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's not a great quarterback. Brady, like Brady, it's beat, that type of Brady situation beat, now. Brady beat Manning so many times. Didn't mean that Manning was a bad quarterback. Manning was a great quarterback. That's why he's in the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame and he's won his championships, right? But Brady always had his number, right? But you know, I believe like there was Brady and Manning. There was Breeze and Rogers for years, like New Orleans and Green Bay. And now we got Mahomes and 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 Allen, and we got to enjoy yeah. that, man. And, and I am like, I am super excited that we get to be a part of like a fan base that's actually in on that type of matchup. Yeah, which is just crazy to think as a Bills yeah. fan. But yeah. all right, so let's move on from that. I have a yeah. 
this is, I guess, is an unexpected question, which I've thrown yeah. a couple at you so far. Yeah. Uh, kudos to you for actually <laughs> just going with the flow on that yeah. one. Um, but unexpected question, and it's unexpected impact player. I'm yeah. going to give you two players for me. Sure. I want to see if you have anybody else that, yeah. like, if this guy plays really well, then the Bills win. And I have one on offense, one on defense. If Mitch Morse plays the game of his life and does whatever he can possibly do, like just doesn't let anybody buy him, run blocking incredible, pass blocking incredible, then the yeah. Bills win the game. Yeah. If Dane Jackson has the game of his life and gets a pick, the Bills win the game. Because if he's playing great, he can be one of the guys who forces a turnover. Yeah. Then I think the Bills are going to be in an even better position. And that I don't think that's like a crazy thought, out of the box type of thought. But for me, those are the two guys when I look at the offense and the defense of like who's like that unsung hero potential. Yeah. Mitch Morse doesn't get enough credit. No, he does. But if if the middle of the uh, of the line gets blown up, there's going to be a lot of blame put on him. Yeah, I I, th- I think he's just been the most consistent offensive lineman all year, except for yeah. you could say maybe Deion Dawkins. But like if he plays the game of his life life against Chris Jones that completely changes the outcome of this game. If Dane Jackson on the outside completely plays the best game of his life, that changes the outcome for the entire defense. Do you have anybody different that you would point to for those Uh, types of things? I think on defense, I think Matt Milano's got to have his best game ever. Because I think he's going to be on Travis Kelsey and, and he's going to be kind of the spy, but not this, you know, like a spy type on Jarek McKinnon. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the key to stop, I think, the two most dangerous guys that are going to be for Kansas City on offense, Travis Kelsey and and Jarek McKinnon. And Matt Milano, if he has his moments where he misses tackles, it's going to be a long day for Bills fans. <laughs> All right, the, so then um, offense. Often, Reggie Gill. I think Reggie Gill is going to be huge because he's been a stud at blocking. One of the keys, if you look, a lot of people are giving – Bates a lot of recognition on the O line, and he deserves it because can, he's. Can been I show you? Phenomenal. Can I show you something? What? I don't know if the camera will pick up on this. I'm what? just gonna I'm gonna put this up here. Can it? Can you see what that says? It says, "I uh, uh, impact player Reggie Gilliam." It's kind of That's, blurry. Yeah, yeah, that was Reggie. Uh, I had uh, Reggie Gilliam or Mitch Morse. Those were my two yeah. guys. That was incredible. Uh, I think Reggie Gilliam is key. Like if you notice since. Since Singletary's been f- good, who's been in front of him blocking for him? It, mm-hmm. It's been Gillum. And I think Gillum is still going to be the key against a guy like Chris Jones and, you know, that middle part of the off- uh, uh, D-line for Kansas City. Uh, and if Gillum and Bates and some of the other ones who've been key at motor success can get that, that block, key blocks in, Motor's good enough, and we've seen it the last five weeks, that he's good enough to get those yards. So I think Gillen is going to be a, a very big key for Motor's success. And that's where I struggle with the whole, is Motor going to be good? Is it going to be more Allen running than Motor? Mm-hmm. Because I think he is Gillen. If Gillen can get it, Motor's going to get it. Yeah, I, I I can't stress enough how much I agree with Gilliam being one of those unexpected impact players. Um, because yeah. like yeah, I like that dude has been. He has not gotten enough praise for how good he's been. Well, he in hasn't the played much game. earlier well, I, he over the last five, properly. but over the last yeah. five oh, weeks, he's like been... he has. He's you've started to see it a little bit yeah. on social media, but I think he deserves even more praise than what he's gotten. Because Devin Singletary has been the one receiving the praise for, well, the running game's just been yeah. exploding. It's been him. It's been Bates that's gotten a lot of attention for it. And they deserve they all deserve the attention it. in the world. But, but been, at the same time, yes, yeah. Gilliam deserves I think the so first much time praise I saw for recognition. The first time I saw recognition was last week uh, uh, on some of the uh, – the highlights are like right after the play they're showing and Gilliam was talked about a lot and how he, mm-hmm. how he has been for motor. So yeah, he's, he's finally getting recognized for his, uh, his, his help of motor. So I think if Gilliam goes motor goes. So yeah, full look, fullbacks matter. Fullbacks yeah. matter. If you, if you know how to incorporate them into a game plan, 
Fullbacks yeah. matter. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll do actual keys to the game now. Yeah. I have one that we haven't actually talked about yet, but I think this is going to be extremely important because of the refs. And we, we can complain about the refs all we want, but like we saw, I don't know if maybe everybody who's listening did not see, but the the officiating crew that is calling this game has called the least pass interference calls out of any crew in the entire NFL. They do not call them. So you can go into this game expecting it's going to be a physical game. And last year in the championship game, the Bills did not respond very well to that. It seemed like none of the receivers responded extremely well. And I know Beasley was hurt. Diggs was yeah. hurt. But it like they just didn't respond as well to how physical the Chiefs were. I think, and this is something that could be interesting, the Bills, and this, this isn't an I think thing, they have not gotten pass interference calls for them this year. They've been able to overcome that. If they can continue doing that, if they cannot let that physical nature matter in this game, if they can out physical the Chiefs, I think it's going to matter. And I mean that more, even more so like with the wide receivers versus the defensive backs than anywhere else, because part of what makes the Bills offense go is the fact that the wide receivers get open. If they can out physical the DBs and still make their way to getting open, then this offense is going to have a ton of opportunities because they're probably not going to get those calls with the officiating crew. If they kind of fall back and and don't play as, as physical as they need to, to play up to that level, then they might struggle. So I think being able to out physical the chiefs, being able to overcome a defense that wants to play physical, that wants to get their hands on you. If they can overcome that, if they can match that level, then I think that this offense is going to have a lot of opportunities to score. Yeah. And I think Hussey is the ref. Yeah. The, yeah. I don't, I didn't remember his I first his name record. and that's why I didn't want to say it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's I think Hussey, Hussey though, his last yeah. name. Yeah, and I believe I saw somewhere on Twitter somebody posted. I don't know who, so I I can't really give them the recognition. The credit, but yeah. <laughs> I believe uh, uh, I believe the Chiefs are five and three when he's uh, refing, and the Bills are three and five. So yeah, so yeah, let's so keep that in something, mind, <laughs> right? And I think as as dumb as that might be, like that stuff that's matters huge. because yeah. if the Bills can't play up to the way the refs are going to call the game then that they're just not going to be ready to play. Like you've got to be a ready to play yeah. for the way and the game's going to be called. Part or of, if you're not ready, you've got to find a way to adjust mid game. Part of the part of, and this is where I go from coaching. Like part of the coach's job is to know who the ref is. What kind of games has he called with us? What kind of games has he called with Kansas city and have your game plan around that. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the coach's job. So it, as much as we want to put pressure on the players like Milano, we talked about Gilliam and Motor and Allen and, you know, Dane Jackson. There's a lot of pressure on these three coaches to perform, because if they don't and they get beat like last year. Bill's Mafia is going to go for their heads. I Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't expect it to be, even if the Bills were to lose, which we'll get to our predictions in a little yeah. bit, I, I just wouldn't expect it to be that type of game the way it was last year. I think it's going to be a close game kind of no matter what situation. But if they were to get beat like they did last year, then there's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of fans that are extremely unhappy and yeah. probably unjustly calling for jobs that really don't yeah. really need to be yeah. called for at this point. Yeah, but. That's all. That's yeah, a whole I'll other be, discussion. I'll be, that if they I lose like last year, I'll be muting our chat. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's, is I, sure. You know what? I've been I've been really getting into the mute button on Twitter. Not even just like yeah. chats and whatnot, but like yeah. individual people. Like I'm 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 dishing that mute button out yeah. real fast right now. Yeah. And yeah. I'll I'll come back to it later and maybe revisit and be like, yeah. okay, you, you've served your time within the the mute prison, and I will unmute you and I will let it let you come back on the feed. But especially if you're somebody who's like a fan of another team at this point, you come in saying some dumb stuff in the mentions. I'm just going to throw that mute button out there and just, just ignore it completely. That's that's felt like throwing that one out there. Um, (laughs) All right. Your, your key to the game. My key to the game. Yes. Your key Uh, to the game. I struggled with the key to the game because I knew you were going to ask me this. 
Uh, honestly, it's Josh Allen to me. Like, uh, it, which Josh Allen's going to show up? Like, every the media's talked about it. You know, I've thought about it. Like, Allen's had a very much of a roller coaster year this year. And uh, other than the last maybe four weeks, he's played pretty good. Um, you know, I hope he's mentally ready, but I think he's going to be the key. If if he starts out shaky, uh, I think it's going to be a long day. It's it's a chalk pick, and it goes directly it's against that hypothetical that I had mentioned yeah. earlier. But yeah, I I it's hard to disagree with that yeah. type of answer. I know because what, like I I know what Mahomes is going to bring. He's he's established what he is in the last couple of years, but I think Allen is still working on that. I think he's there, but he's there's there's things that he just just needs to a little bit. He's almost there, but and that's what scares me. And there's going to be people who don't like hearing that, but I get it. I like I get why you would say that because, like, even though like you think you look back to the playoff teams that the Bills faced this year, yeah. you know the Titans, the Chiefs, the Patriots, and then who else was a the, the Colts. Even Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, there's there's a couple of games in there. The Colts, Pittsburgh, Allen didn't necessarily have his best game, but then there's also moments you can look to where it's like the Patriots, two out of three games. The the Titans, Allen still showed up big time. Yeah, the Chiefs, yeah, Allen did. showed up. like so. It I understand that thought process of like yeah. if we get that like that Josh Allen that showed up against the the Steelers or the. I don't expect Colts him or the to Jaguars be, or whatever. Like if we get yeah, bad Josh get, Allen, things are going to be difficult. If we get, but I don't think we're going to get bad Josh Allen because I, hope I so. just bad Josh Allen is a thing of the past in general. Like I, there's games where it comes to, up still, but Josh Allen is not the same player that he was in 2019 or 2018 yeah, no, or even no. just like, he's not, like that, he's not that player. And that's what I'm saying. He's much he's more not, consistent. He's much more consistent, but he does have, the Jackson and Jaguars moments. And that's what's great. So can I can I throw a wrench in this whole thing sure. for you? Patrick Mahomes has those moments too. Like he had that game against does, the Titans but, where but, he was he was part of the reason that they got blown out. He threw three or four interceptions in the first half. So even like guys Mahomes, who are elite me, can still been there, like they're still gonna do that. Mahomes has been at big games three out of his what five years? Yes, he has the experience right, by right. far over Josh and Allen. Allen in this, still for sure, it. yes. And, and so, so we want to see that, that big mental, game from Allen yeah, in a I, big game like this. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. he had one last week, but I don't expect that either, right? I'm expecting. Oh, nobody him, expects the perfect game again. You know, although like, I would uh, love that. But I, I, I expect him to be a little bit better than what his consistency is. Has been this year, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I think that's probably fair. Yeah, and that's I think what it's, worries it's, me. It should because be expected, he panics though. when he comes out. Much. I think when he comes out shaky, he panics and he does things that he probably shouldn't do. But that's and that's where I think that my my situation from earlier comes into play, where it's like I think the Bills' running game can be relied on it, enough it, to work through huge. that. Yeah, I so think I think that's, that's massive. Where and that's where if Josh Allen doesn't bring his A game for the first quarter, yeah. the Bills can still get by with we can still run the ball. So I think in everything still has to go right. Like they still have to show yeah. up and play. Yeah. But that's why I was saying that earlier is that I I I honestly think that. The Bills can get by if Josh Allen is not on his A game throwing the ball yeah. for every single quarter because I think there's other parts of their offense at this point in the season. Not yeah. not if you look back at the entire season, yeah. but yeah. at this point in the season, the way they're playing, I understand those those concerns. And I like it's hard to fully dispute it, but that's why I was kind of throwing that out yeah. earlier. I, I that's why for me, I know it's the easy pick, the key of the game is Allen, but honestly, it is Allen. <laughs> For me, yeah. it's Allen. Like honestly, yeah. if if we see Allen from you know you know some parts of this year, or even Allen from last year's playoff game, like it's gonna be, you know, he he might play good, but it might not be enough to win, right? Yeah, potentially. 
Yeah. Um, it's look, sometimes the chalk answer is the right answer. Yeah. It's, it's easy to be like, well, I don't want to make the chalk answer. And I do that sometimes, but yeah. sometimes the chalk answer is the right answer. Yeah. So I, I don't really disagree with you. Yeah. Um, predictions. We got in-game prediction. Then we'll give a score prediction after. What is your prediction? Something that's going to happen in this game, whether it's a play, whether it's whatever. What's your prediction for this game? One of the defenses gets a pick six. Do you think another pick six? Two games this year where a team gets a pick six. That would yeah. be interesting. Either Kansas City defense or Buffalo defense. I'm not going to predict a pick six, but that would definitely flip the game script on its head. Like that's if, if I don't know the exact numbers on it, but I do know that when a defense gets a pick six, they're the like it's exponential how much yeah. how different it is before on percentages of like percentage to win just win. rises yeah. exponentially when you get a pick six, yeah. which it yeah. should, because if yeah. your defense is not expected to score and then all of a sudden they do changes things. Yeah. I have, I have three and I won't really like explain all of them or anything, but I do think Devin Singletary continues his run. I think he goes over a hundred total yards, not rushing total rushing okay. and receiving combined over a hundred. I think, the, the Bills are going to get to Patrick Mahomes because this defensive line has been playing really yeah, well. Yeah, they've been playing good. And I think they're going to force a turnover. I I don't think that really matters all that much in terms of anything unless the Bills do not turn the ball over, which it would not shock me if the Bills also have a turnover. I think that's just part of like what we said earlier of like which team recovers the best from their mistake. Yeah, yeah. The one I really wanted to go with, though, I think the Bills have a trick play. I know we ran that play for Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle got his touchdown catch. That was awesome. The big man touchdown. Love seeing that. I don't know what the trick play is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a, a running back pass, wide receiver pass, whatever. I think the Bills execute some sort of a trick play, though, because to beat the Chiefs, as you good gotta, as the Bills are, I yeah. think you got to find something out. Like you got to pull something out of the bag. Yeah, you do to to confuse them a little bit, make them think, make them pause, throw something at them that you haven't shown anybody else, and do that. I think that's something that could come into play big time in this game. Yeah. I I agree. I think uh, I think a trick play as long as Allen is not receiving. It. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please. Please. Please, for the love of God, Josh Allen, do not catch a touchdown pass. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Digs to Knox. That sounds good. <laughs> Would love that. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll do. I'll do anybody to anybody else as long as Josh Allen not is not on the receiving end of a touchdown. Yeah. Because, man, I like at some point the stats yeah, on the, that have the, to flip. But like, I, I, I don't want to test that theory in the playoffs. <laughs> no, I don't either. We've had enough no. of that in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got over under is 54 and a half right now. Chiefs are favored by two points. They are obviously, like, it, this is another thing that's interesting. The Chiefs have never been favored by less than two and a half points. Yeah. So that's, that's, this is going to be a first for them. Like I said at the beginning, when we were talking about this, the, the Bills are favored on the Twitter poll that we put out. It is skewed because this is a bill show, but the bills yeah. were picked at 94%. Um, I don't think it should be anywhere close to that. I think it should honestly be 50, 50. If you listen to the media, honestly, this week, it has been 50, 50, 50, 50. which is really cool. It's not like, it's just a, Oh, well, this guy's smart. Cause he's picking the bills. I think it's really cool that going up against a team that's been as good as the chiefs for as long as they have been good. Like you're looking and watching at the media and take out some of the people that just say like the utterly stupid stuff. But you listen to people who oh, know what they're talking Keyshawn about. Johnson? <laughs> and others. Yeah. <laughs> but like if you listen to the people who know what they're talking about, yeah. They're making like the people who are making actual good arguments, they're some of them are picking the Bills, some of them are picking the Chiefs. Yeah, these and teams in this type of matchup, I think that it should be that way. I yeah. don't think anybody I don't think it should be everybody's picking the bills. I don't think it should be everybody's picking the chiefs. Cause I think these two teams are that closely matched. Yeah, I love so seeing close. what I've been seeing from the yeah. smart national TV people. I think that this is as close as two teams are. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. It's going to yeah. be a really fun matchup. Yeah. What is your, what's your score prediction, Manny? Uh, as you probably heard, I have a lot of, you know, gut feelings, gut feelings, week. fears, 
yeah worries yeah you are you are a nervous nelly right now yeah and i am going with a 34 31 kansas city victory wow people are gonna hate you yeah. <laughs> but look you gotta you gotta go with your gut. i think they're gotta close. go with your gut yeah i i think they're close i think i think they're closer i think next year is the year and yeah some look sometimes it happens where it's you got to get over the hump that very next year. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a couple of years. Well, look and, at Pete Manning. It took yeah, him a couple of years not be to get over the New England. Uh, I and, think. And th- here's what I love. I hope. And this is, it, this look, is look, what we just I want, did. I want ca- ca- Buffalo to win. Don't get me wrong. If Buffalo wins, I am all for it. Obviously, I've been a fan for 34 years. But I'm also looking at, at a real, like, as a point of view of, not being a Bills fan. I'm looking at, yeah. at at from a, you know, somebody who's not a Bills or a Chiefs fan, just kind of looking at it as a football person. And what Kansas City has done the last three years and what Buffalo is doing the last three years, I just think that experience that Kansas City has right now will just squeak out Buffalo this year. But I think Buffalo's, I think they're close. Yeah, it's real close. I love what's go- what just happened here, though, because we're like I was just mentioning that yeah. it's 50 50 split 50. down the middle yeah. for like the people who you should actually be trusting yeah. Uh, yeah. on TV. Like it's not all picking one side or the other. No. We're doing the exact same. Yeah. And I, here's my reasoning for picking the Bills because I understand every single reason somebody would pick the Chiefs in this game. Yeah. They've been there longer. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes has been more consistent in the playoffs. As good as Josh Allen has been at times, yeah. Patrick Mahomes has been more consistent. He's yeah. won a Super Bowl. They've yeah. been to the big game. They've won in big moments. They've seen all there is to see in the playoffs. I get all of that. All of that, if that's your reasoning, makes complete sense. They have insane weapons on that offense. Yeah. Their defense is hot. They're on a roll. Here's my reasoning, though. Both teams are hot right now, right? At some point when you're hot, it has to cool off. The Chiefs have been the team that's hotter for yeah, longer. I, and I brought I that up before. At some point, I think we might have talked about this last yeah. week, but yeah. at some point, they got when you're lose. on a hot streak, you're yeah. going to have to lose. Yeah. At some point, that hot streak has to cool off, even if it's just like a little bit. And the margin for error, I think, in this game is going to be so small because of how yes. close these two teams are that if the Chiefs, if they're if they cool off even just a little bit this week, I think the Bills have their number. And I also, yeah. I think, and I, I heard Dan Orlovsky say this, and I agree with this. If both teams bring their absolute A game and play their absolute best, I think the Bills are better in that scenario. I but the Chiefs so have been more consistent for longer, yeah. so I, I and, get every other reason. And that's but why. For that reason, I'm picking the Bills. And I have I it in a close game. <laughs> I have it in a close game, though. I think it yeah. literally comes down to the last possession or two. Like it's, I think it's going to be a nail biter the entire way, yeah. whether the Chiefs end up winning or the Bills end up winning. I think this is a close game yeah, down so to too. the like the last possession. I got the Bills winning though, thirty-one twenty-seven, a little bit less points than you, yeah. But right around that same, it's going to be a one-score game. We're going to be sweating it out, yeah. And it's going to be so much fun to watch. Yeah, and oh, yo, I'm rooting for the Bills. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, <laughs> even though I picked it, I. I honestly didn't want to pick a prediction. I like that you did, though. I like that you picked I, but I, I, I like that we're to, split on this. I had to kind of like – it just had gut feeling. You yeah, know? Like, follow, look, I, follow your gut. Look, I, your gut. I was a huge Peyton Manning fan over Brady, and it took Manning years mm-hmm. to get over that hump. I don't think it's going to take years for Allen to get over that hump. You just as don't expect it to be this – year i don't and think it people I aren't gonna like that but you've got to trust your gut so yeah. I, I respect that i, I like hope that we're split does. on this too i hope he proves me wrong which is great because he's my favorite quarterback and that's why i love him but he's also the reason why i worry all the time <laughs> so yeah yeah all right the, so you you had 31 or 34, 34 31, 31. okay all right manny we're it's gonna be interesting sunday hey, night it's, hey, game we of the week talk about the, that could be up to butker and uh bass Oh my goodness! Like yeah, we didn't even about, talk about that. That's a whole like, other discussion. I look, but but hey, I just want to say, if it's Butt Curb Bass, there's two no better kickers in the AFC to go down and and try to win it. Butker and and Bass are phenomenal kickers. 
kickers. So. They are. I would say there's one better kicker, but they yeah, are both his name absolutely is phenomenal. <laughs> no, no, I was saying Justin Tucker, but oh, whatever. Yeah, okay, he's not even in the playoffs. Who no, he's not. He's that? not even there to be in the discussion. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, Manny. It's going to yeah. be interesting Sunday night. It's going to be a yes. long weekend trying to get through the other oh. games just to be able to get to watch yeah. the Bills game. Yeah. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah. exciting. And hopefully we're talking again next week about yes, another we game for the Bills. Or I'm I hope get that you're apologizing hate. for being dead wrong. I hope all Bye. of that happens. I'll apologize Because if right that now. happens. <laughs> no, no. Don't apologize early. But if, yeah. if you're apologizing next week, that means yeah. we're still in it. That means yes. the Bills are still yeah. playing. So I, as much as like, I – I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I hope you're wrong. And with that being said, man, <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you do. You you don't want to be right about this. Yeah. But Manny, with all that being said, let me get a go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.